IFRS 1 on first time adoption. IFRS 1 is simply for those that are adopting IFRS for the first time. That is, they are adopting it for just the first time in their financial statement. Now, the following are the things to be covered under the standard. We are going to look at the objective of IFRS 1, introduction to the standard itself, some of the key definitions, the issues with IFRS with the first time adoption, then factors to be considered in implementing IFRS in an organization, the benefit of harmonizations, the roadmap itself, and disclosure requirements. Now, this IFRS 1 is simply for those that are applying IFRS for the first time. That is, it is always adopted whenever a company is converting from local gap to IFRS for the first time. And this IFRS 1 sets out the procedure to the follow when converting from local gap to IFRS. It sets out the major procedures to be followed when a company is converting from local gap to IFRS. Now, what are the various procedures to be followed? Now, that is, IFRS once set out the procedures that anything must follow when it adopts IFRS for the first time as a basis for preparing its general purpose final statement. That is, once IFRS has been adopted, it cannot be reversed again. The decision cannot be reversed again. That is, once it is adopted, the decision cannot be reversed again. Now, the following are the introductory part to this standard. Now, a first time adopted adopter is an entity that for the first time make an explicit and all reserve statement that it is its annual report are uh, being prepared with IFRS. That is, the, uh, whenever a company prepares its account under first time adoption, the companies must make a note and a split statement that this account is prepared in line with international financial reporting standard. There must be a note that be, uh, there must be that must state that particular item that the account is prepared in line with what IFRS. Now, an entity may, for, may be a first time adopter if in the pre preceding year it prepared in IFRS for internal management tools as long as those IFRS may not be made available. For example, now, if an entity prepared its previous year's account in line with IFRS but that account was not published, then in the year the company intends to make the account to be known as published, then the company can be called a first time adopter that is the IFRS is to be made public to the general public in the, for the first time in the history of the company now if IFRS for any reasons made available to owner or internal party in the preceding year then the entity will already be considered to be an IFRS that is any entity that have previously po that has previously prepared an account that is in line with IFRS in its previous years then that entity is no more a first time adopter that is, once you have pre convert to IFRS, IFRS 1 is no more applicable to you again. IFRS 1 is for those that are adopting IFRS for the first time. So once you have done your conversion, then you don't need IFRS 1 again. Now, but the following are still important again to be noted under the introductory spark to IFRS 1. And it can also be a first time adopter if in the preceding year, if in your statement, I started complying with some but not full. What this is saying is that whenever you are preparing your account in line with IFRS, you must prepare a full IFRS account. There should not be a partial conversion. You must convert. Whenever you do a partial conversion, then your account is not in line with IFRS because there must be a full conversion to IFRS. So that means that if you prepare a partial conversion, any year you are ready to make to prepare a full IFRS, then that year will be called your year of conversion. Now, the next thing that needs to be considered is included only a reconciliation of selected figure from previous gap that is what you show is just your reconciliation figure but the basic thing that is required other IFRS is not discovered is not disclosed so whenever you are ready to do such disclosure then it is that time that you become a first time adopter now however an entity is not a first time adopter if in the precedent year in financial statement one comply with IFRS if in the previous year all your accounts are prepared in line with IFRS then you are no more a first time adopter then if your financial statements comply with both your local gap and IFRS but the keyword is that it comply with IFRS so in that case you are no more a first time adopter once you have already prepared a previous account that is in line with IFRS now the following are some of the definitions that needs to be noted number one what is date of transitions there is a difference between conversion date and transition date for example now if a company is to convert to IFRS in 2013 the transition date will be 2012 that is 1st of January 2012 that is the period before the conversion date that is the comparative year before the year of conversion 
that is the transition date. All this will be discussed when we get to the phases of conversion. Now, the next thing is dim cost. Dim cost is any amount that is substituted for cost or depreciation at a given date. Any amount that is replaced by IFRS as a substitute for cost or depreciated cost at a given date, that amount is referred to as dim cost. What is fair value? Fair value is simply an amount in which a transaction on an item could be exchanged or a liability could be settled between knowledgeable willing parties in an arm length transactions. Now, that is what fair value is all about. So IFRS itself is talking about fair value. Almost everything about IFRS is referring to fair value. All transactions must be disclosed as a fair value. Now, first IFRS financial statement. This is the first set of account that is prepared that is, a company must make a statement when they are preparing their first IFRS statement, and that statement must be an explicit and unreserved statement of compliance with what IFRS. Whenever a company is preparing IFRS for the first time, they must make a statement that this account is prepared in line with international financial reporting standard. Now, what is the opening statement of financial opening IFRS statement of financial position, and then it this SOFP a little transition to an IFRS. For example, now. If a company is converting in 2013, the opening IFRS account will be 2012, while the main conversion year is 2013. So transition date is the same as the opening IFRS financial position. What is the reporting date? Reporting date is usually 12-month period, which is covered by the financial statement. That is the reporting date, a 12-month period covered by the financial statement. Now, let's look at the problem company may face when they are converting to IFRS for the first time. Number one thing is that the date of transition. How will a company know its transitioning date? After that, which IFRS will be adopted? That's another problem the company will face. And even when you are doing conversion from Nigerian GAP to IFRS, there will definitely be some differences. Now, how will those differences be accounted for? That is either gain or losses. How should they be accounted for? These are some of the problems. Then, explanation and disclosure to be made in the year of transition. Number one thing about IFRS is that IFRS is preaching full disclosure. That is, there must be a full disclosure. Nothing should be hidden under IFRS. There must be a full disclosure. That is what IFRS is preaching. There must be full disclosure. And the final thing is that what exemptions are available to companies. So all these questions will be answered in subsequent lectures. First of all, let's start with the date of transition. The date of transition is the beginning of the earliest period for which an entity prepares full cooperative statement under IFRS. If a complete conversion date is 2013, date of transition is the opening of 2012, which is the previous year. That is 1st of January is the date of transition. Now, IFRS should be applied from the first day of the set of financial statement published in compliance with IFRS. This is called the opening financial statement. In this case now, that 2013 is the conversion period, the opening financial statement is 2012. Because IFRS requires comparative statement to be published, the opening financial statement for anything should be prepared in line with what IFRS that is both the opening and closing which is like comparative comparative should be prepared in line with IFRS but the opening statement itself needs not to be published but it will be shown as part of the comparative figure to the one that will be published which is the closing statement now the next question that needs to be answered is which IFRS should be adopted that is which IFRS itself should be adopted now Whenever a company is converting to IFRS, they should be able to answer the following question. There are four questions that need to be answered. That is, number one, recognize all assets and liability required by IFRS. When you are converting to IFRS for the first time, there are some assets and liability that needs to be recognized by IFRS. For example, now, under the intangible asset development cost that, that we used to expense under our local gap, but under IFRS, development cost should be recognized if it meets the recognition criteria so in such case if if developmental costs are being expensed under IFRS it must be recognized that is the new rules for developmental cost this will be explained further under the intangible asset another keyword that word noting is is the recognized asset and liability not permitted by asset any item that does not allow for recognition under IFRS should be what they recognize for example now there are some conditions for provisions that is for us to make any provisions, three things must occur. Number one, there must be an obligation which results from past events. Another thing is that the amount must be reasonably known. Another thing is that it must result in future cash flow. 
So if a previous recognized provision does not meet any of these criteria, it should be what the recognized from the books. That is, the recognized asset and liability not permitted by RFRS. The third thing is that reclassify all asset and liability and equity component of any asset. That is, some items may be reclassified as explained under IS1 that renewable preference shares will be reclassified from from equity to non-current liability. So these are the classification that, that needs to be done under IFRS 1. Then the final thing is that measure all assets and liabilities in accordance with what? IFRS. For example, now, measurement needs to be done. Some assets need to be measured at their fair value. Then the major thing is that different taxes balance may have been discounted to present value, but IS 12 does not permit discounting. Therefore, the amounts will need to be remeasured on an undiscounted value. That is, you need to do some measurement of some asset to be in line with IFRS. Majorly, all PPE needs to may likely be revalued, I mean, at fair value, so that they can be remeasured for us to know the actual reasons of the value of the complaints asset under IFRS. So those are the four questions that need to be answered. Number one, recognize all assets and liability required by IFRS. Number two is the, the recognized asset and liability not permitted by IFRS. Number three, reclassify all asset and liability and equity components in accordance with IFRS reclassification. Then measure all asset and liability in accordance with IFRS. Now, the next point is this. How do we recognize gain on loss on conversion? One thing about IFRS is that when you are converting, any gain or losses that you arrive at from conversion should be transferred directly to retained any. It is retained any that will suffer everything. If it is gain on conversion or loss on conversion, all should be adjusted for in the retained any. That is, all the transitioning resulting figure adjustment balancing figure should be transferred to retain any. Now, the next thing is this. Explanations and disclosure. What IFRS expression is that there must be a full disclosure. That is, there must be a detailed disclosure of transactions. Now, let's look at some of the things that is required under the disclosure. The first thing is this. Now, two main disclosure require is required. That is, the entities, the entities, equity as reported under previous gap must be reconciled to the equity reported under IFRS. This can be done through the statement of changes in equity. You must. Reconcile your Nigeria gap equity to that of IFRS doing adjustment required. Now, before you can do any conversion, you need the following. Number one, you need three statement of financial position. That is the audited account. All conversion will be done based on audited account only. Do not use management account to do conversion. You will make use of only the audited account. You know you need to know the following when you are converting date of transaction and the delayed statement of financial position on that gap. These are the things that we assist you when you are converting. Now, after knowing that, that you need the state of financial position, the next thing that is required is the last annual profit or loss reported under previous gas must be reconciled to the same year's total compressive income prepared under IFRS. There must also be reconciliation of the old profit and loss accounts with that of the IFRS. Why any material differences between GAP and IFRS must be explained. You, there must be a detailed reconciliation statement for all those material differences. Now, items which do not qualify for recognition as an asset or liability under IFRS must be what? Excluded. That is, all items that do not qualify under asset or liability should be what? They recognize instantly. That is the new rules. For example, now, under the IS38 on intangible asset, items such like trading costs, all these items should be recognized from asset and they should be expensed. That is the new rule. Now, all these things, for example, now the last thing is that your goodwill they should be tested for impairment. All goodwill should be tested for impairment annually. Before we used to amortize goodwill, but in line with IFRS 3, all goodwill should be tested for impairment only. Now, the final thing I need to be discussed here is the share based payment transaction. What is share based? Share based is when a payment is made with what with shares instead of the actual payment itself, shares are being issued. It could either be for expenses. Or asset. For example, now most companies can promise their staff that if they perform in a particular period, probably in the next five years, they will issue out shares for them. In that case, at the time where the promise was made or where the agreement was signed, that is referred to as the granting date. That is the date where the agreement was made or the contract was signed. At the granting date, all those promises made by the company should be what? 
recognized in the books. For example, if companies promise to pay its staff 1 million shares, if there is a performance in year five, in five years' time, that means that the granting date, we must recognize that 1 million error by debiting the employee's benefit account and credit shares to be issued accounts. 